Okay, hi, so in this video we're going to speak about sound. Now the reason we've left sound until the end is because so far we've had a look at what waves are, how they interact with things, and the different properties of waves. And now we can bring a lot of that together, all in one uh, video, using sound as an example. Now firstly, we must remember that sound is a longitudinal wave. Now, if you don't remember what that means, then please do have a look at my first video where we introduce waves. But longitudinal basically means that the vibrations occur in the same direction as the wave movement, so energy transfer. Whereas a transverse wave, the vibrations will happen perpendicular, so at a right angle to the movement of the wave. A longitudinal wave, they will be in the same direction. Now, it's very easy to create a sound. We know that because I'm currently talking to you at the moment. You can hear it via your speakers. So your speakers are actually making the sound. All that needs to happen is something needs to vibrate in air. So vibrations in air. Okay, and the reason for this is that if, let's say, you had particles of air, let's say these are particles, whatever, You've got something here, which is a speaker, which is causing vibrations back and forward. Okay, Air is continually being drawn in and then pushed out and then drawn in and pushed out and drawn in and pushed out. And if we have more of these particles, when these get pushed over here, then these air particles are going to be pushed away as well, and so on. But then when they get drawn in, they'll be drawn back, and so on, and so on, and so on. And what you create is a wave of air, which is moving in this direction, away from the source of the sound. And so as obviously the vibrations are back and forward, and the wave is moving this way, it's parallel, and therefore it's longitudinal. Now if you think back and remember that waves have a frequency, Sound waves that we can hear typically have a frequency between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. 20,000. And remember, that refers to how many waves or wave crests pass a point every second. And basically, high frequency sound, so this is obviously the highest frequency sound, that is equal to a high pitch. Okay, so a high pitched sound. Low frequency waves are equal to a low pitch sound. Okay, so the frequency is directly related to the pitch of the sound. Now, in general, this is what we can hear. Um, as you get older, your ability to hear this really high frequency sound does actually start to decline. So a lot of people, for example, um, especially the elderly people, can't hear dog whistles. Whereas some people can actually hear dog whistles. And so that is the difference in your ability to hear high pitched sound. Now importantly, as these waves have to travel through a substance, they are also known as mechanical. Mechanical. Okay, this is different to electromagnetic because they can travel through a vacuum. And a sound wave cannot travel through vacuum. So cannot travel through a vacuum. We can actually prove this by causing a um, bell to ring inside a jar. If we set up this in a lab and we can actually remove all the air out of the jar, what happens is the sound eventually disappears. Once we have all the air out of the jar, the sound is completely disappeared. Now if you think back to the videos on the properties of waves, we spoke about reflection. Reflection. Now sound can actually reflect and it is via something you will have heard of and we call it an echo okay so an echo is just the reflection of sound if you don't remember how reflection works then please go previously and have a look at that video but basically an echo will happen when you have smooth surfaces just like the light will reflect off a smooth mirror when you have smooth surfaces for example, when I was recording these videos, 
um, a few videos back, you can probably hear a bit of an echo. That's because I've moved room, I've got a different sort of office, and it's got a whiteboard on the wall. And I completely forgot to dampen the sound by putting pillows and soundproofing in, and so there was an echo there. So that's my fault, and sorry for that. <laughs> but... That is a good example of how echoes work. When there are smooth surfaces, um, then an echo will occur. Whereas if you've got things like pillows or um, anything inside a room, really, which is not smooth and will dampen the sound, then you won't get the echo. And that's because soft substances, when you have soft substances, they absorb sound rather than reflect. And when you have a rough surface, it doesn't mean it's going to absorb, but it will scatter the sound. Because obviously the wave is coming in, what could happen is it will be reflected, but it could be reflected here, 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 blah, 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 and that will cause scattering. Whereas if you had a smooth surface, the wave will come in one way and it will be perfectly reflected the other way okay so this is why a rough surface will not cause an echo but a smooth surface will okay so we also spoke about a refraction now wave uh, sound waves will also undergo refraction now remember we said that refraction is a result of um, waves traveling at different speed through different substances if the air is at a different temperature this affects how fast sound will travel through the air. And so when you have a higher temperature, higher temperature, you have a faster speed of sound. So speed of sound. And this causes refraction. Now, this really is quite interesting because at night, the air at the ground is being heated up by the ground and therefore it's warmer than the air as you move higher up. That's because there's, the sun's not out and the air higher up is not being heated. So at night time, the low air is warmer. And that means that the sound will refract back towards the ground. Because remember, the speed of sound will, will uh, vary the angle at which refraction will occur. And if the air is warmer and sound will travel faster, it will have a higher angle of refraction. So sound will refract towards the ground in this case. If it's a hot sunny day, then the, then the air sorry, above ground is warmer than the air close to the ground. That means refraction will occur away from the ground. That's why at night time, the, you can actually hear more. Sounds are heard from further away because of refraction, because the sounds are refracted back towards the ground, and obviously that's where we are, so we can hear things. In the daytime, sound will be refracted away from the ground, and so as you get further and further away, the sound actually refracts away from you, and so you can't hear it. So it is an interesting example. Uh, it's one which people do struggle to get their head around, so please feel free to pause and rewind that explanation as you like. Okay, so finally, we're going to have a look at musical sound. Now, musical sounds are ones which have a regular pattern. So they have a regular pattern. This means that they produce a smooth wave which will repeat itself, and that's why we find it easy to listen to. This is, of course, a generalization. Some music can be very erratic, but in general, there is at least some sort of rhythm and melody there. Now, I'm sure you've probably seen one of these things before. This is a tuning fork. Tuning fork. And what will happen if you smash this tuning fork against a surface or whatever, what happens is it produces sound which has a regular wave pattern. So it might look like that. Okay, and that's like the waves we've seen previously. Now, just to be clear, this is the wave form. The wave form. 
the air is not actually moving like this, okay? But the waveform shows sound in a regular wave pattern like this that we can see. Okay, and so from here, we would be able to work out the frequency. Frequency, and remember frequency equals pitch. And also, we are able to work out this distance, which is the same as this distance, and that is the amplitude. Amplitude. And remember from previous videos, I said that amplitude controls how much energy there is in the wave, and so the amplitude tells us the volume. The volume, or how loud it is. Okay, so a higher amplitude tells you it's louder, and if you had a wave which looked like this, so loads of waves, that would mean a higher frequency, which would be a higher pitch. Okay, so this wave here, for example, the amplitude is clearly smaller than the one here, so it's more uh, quiet, it's got a lower volume, but it's got a higher pitch. If you had a wave up here, which looked like this, obviously it would be a regular pattern, but this would do. This has got an even higher amplitude than this, but it's also occurring uh, very frequently. So you've got a high pitch because of high frequency and a high volume because of this high amplitude. And that is because you've got this line here and this would be the amplitude all the way to the top though. Okay, and so any sound, um, can we can show the waveform by putting it uh, through an oscilloscope. So the device which produces a waveform is an oscilloscope. Okay, and that will produce something that looks like that. Okay, so finally, when we are looking at musical instruments, let's use a new page. Musical instruments, well, they produce different notes. Notes. Okay, and we can recognize those. Now, what's happening with those notes is they are resonating. Resonating. Now, resonating is just a word for vibrating, but when we are playing a note on an instrument, it will vibrate at a set frequency or a set number or a set uh, sort of range of frequencies. And, it, and we say that it will resonate at these frequencies. So, resonating at different frequencies. Okay, now for example, if you had a flute, okay, this is a flute, you blow into it, and what happens is the air inside the flute is going to resonate, okay, at a set frequency. You probably know that you can do this with an empty bottle, or even if you fill the bottle to different levels and then blow into it, then the bottle will resonate at different frequencies. And that is because of the air inside the bottle. Now this is very different to if you have an instrument which has strings. So if you have... a... whatever this instrument is. I can't really draw six strings, so let's say this might be a banjo. Right, if you pluck one of these strings, it's going to resonate at a frequency. So the vibrations um, cause the air to vibrate, and that will produce the sound. Okay, so it's the vibration of those strings. Now sometimes, obviously, um, a string instrument such as an acoustic guitar will have a hole in it like this as well, and the air inside the guitar will also resonate at the frequency. That can produce a louder sound. Okay, now finally, if you have a drum, this is a drum. When you whack the drum with a drumstick, the skin, or the top here, will vibrate, okay, and that will cause the air to resonate at a certain frequency. Now, depending on how much air there is inside the drum here, so the different sizes of drums produce different sounds, you will get a different frequency. And that's why things like tom-toms sound different because they are different sizes. Okay, so it's those vibrations, each uh, produced in a different way in these three types of instruments, but all of them involve vibration of air and all of them involve resonating at a certain frequency. 
Okay, so I'm going to stop there. That is basically an overview of sound and how sound waves produce musical uh, notes. Uh, if you do have any questions on that, please do feel free to send me an email or to post a comment in the box below and I will be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.